Okay, so let's review yesterday. And then there's an additional idea yesterday uh, from yesterday's puzzle that uh, I wanted to go over. So the Pasuk said, uh, Deep waters are the mouth of a, are the words of a man's mouth, a river flowing, a wellspring of wisdom. So um, anyone want to take a stab at going over what we said yesterday based on the, uh, oh, we had, wait, we had our own interpretation and then we had the Rebbein Yona, right? Yes, I missed the Rebbein Yona. Oh, you missed Rebbein Yona, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you remember what we said? What we said. I didn't say possible. Uh, there you go. You didn't actually this one? Uh, yeah. Uh, this is 18.4. There we go. All uh, right. Uh, we're talking about how to, uh, how to listen properly. Right. Um, Wait a minute, no, no, no. That was Rabin and Jonas, wasn't it? That's Rabin and Jonas? Yeah. I didn't hear Rabin and Jonas. Hmm. <laughs> uh, maybe I could be conflating what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. So I mean, I'm, maybe I'm forgetting it. Uh, I, I'll tell you what I thought we said. Uh, to, and then uh, Zev and Isaac. That's definitely Rabin and Do you remember? Um, well, Rabin and was definitely the listen, listening to a person. Yeah. Um, I think what we were saying was that, like, the two types of ways that a person can can get Chachma. Yes, that's what I thought we were saying also, right? So there's, yeah, you want to you say the full idea? Yeah, so I think there, there's people who um, who have Chachma that they've, um, you know, that they've gotten from someone else and that they're like, they have, like, they can have like deep Chachma, but it's not, um, like they're not going to have like Chidushim because um it's not flowing. It's just um, whatever, like stagnant water was already in there. Right. Um, so they can have chokma, but it's not. Gonna, but like, you know, it's going to be from, like it's not going to be their own chiddush, and it's going to be um, and and like it's not going to like be like changing. Um, whereas, um, whereas um, someone who's like turning over new, like constantly like turning over new ideas in their head and, and like thinking about things, they're going to have. Um, like they'll have new, um, they'll have new insights, and that's like the wellspring of chachma. That's like the 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 source of new chachma. Right. Yeah, and we said that there's a there's a time and a place for each one of these types of thinking. That when you're trying to understand someone else's words, then you kind of have to turn off the faucet of chachma in your mind. Not to turn off your mind, but turning off the attempt to engage with the ideas in a dynamic creative way and you have to be receptive uh or you could you could put in the rabbin yonas thing into just that first half of the puzzle maybe that's where you were getting from of like drawing out the deep waters uh of the chacham who you're listening to but then but then when you are then there's a a stage in your learning either in a particular instance of learning or a stage in your development where your mind has to be dynamic and constantly probing and exploring and that's like the second half Right, and then Rabin Yona's idea was that addressing a mistake in listening to a Chacham of thinking that, of treating his words as shallow, or as, sorry, as surface waters and not assuming that there's a greater depth in them. And that could cause you to miss out on what he's saying or cause you to misunderstand what he's saying. And you have to like delve into it deeply. Um, so a third interpretation, which I didn't go over yesterday is the one that my Chavrus and I came up with. So remember we said at the beginning, is it one, muscle as a whole or is each half its own thing so we were learning as one muscle and um we learned it like this not okay so i mentioned that yesterday there's deep waters in the sense of the depth is deep like an ocean then there's rabin yona waters located at a depth that you have to like draw up with a bucket so we learned it in a different way which is waters that are deep under the earth okay and we learn it as a three-part thing. So there's waters that are deep under the earth that bubbles up as a wellspring. Okay, that's the makor, and then that becomes a river. Okay, so it's three three phases. There's the water under the earth that is not on the surface. Then there's the water that comes up to the surface but is at a, a specific point, like a, a location, and then that becomes a river that flows out. So what we learned, oh, and then we also added in, in one, uh, one thing. So if you look at 
Oh, actually, I guess I give this to you, Isaiah, right now also. Our, so our practice, uh, you, you've been present physically for Mishle this year? No. Okay, yeah. So what we do basically is we, when we look at a Pasuk, we try to either not at all look at the Mepharshim or we hide the Mepharshim so we don't get tempted. Yeah, um, yeah so um, so if you look at Sadiq Owen oh, on the top right, he at, he, he reads it as Ro'ui. Uh, it is proper for the words of a person to be like deep waters and like a wellspring of Chachma and like a river flowing. So uh, this is answering one of the questions we had on the Pazuk, which is the Pazuk is not telling us anything practical, you know? So he puts in the word, it is proper that it should be. Okay, so here's our interpretation. Okay, we, we didn't take it according to the whole Sadiq translation. We took it the way I explained it with a mushal, and then we added in the word roi. So we said the idea is like this, is just because you have um, words that, have, that contain deep chachma does not mean that you are going to be able to communicate them. And what you need to do is, in other words, it's not enough for you to have maim amukim, you actually have to make them come to the surface and flow to the person who you are talking to. Um, otherwise, you're not communicating. So we made it about mm -hmm. communication. And the mistake is one that Chachamim uh, can sometimes fall into, which is that they don't gear their words towards the listener. They just speak their words and assume that the listener is just going to get it. You know? So it's almost the opposite of Rebbein Yonah's subject in the sense that Rebbein Yonah is talking to the listener and we were talking to the speaker. And really, for maximum communication to take place, you need both of them. You need the person who's conveying the chachma to be as clear as possible and to bring the water to the, the drinker. But then you also need the, the listener to make, take the efforts to draw out the depths that are not being uh, you know, presented on, on, the, uh, on the service. Yeah. And it reminds me of Kohalas. Yeah. The use of the word, the, or the word reminds me of the way we're just right. Analyzing, yeah. analyzing everything. It's like the opposite. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. Yeah, water is anti muscle when it comes to the uh, the cough mm -hmm. there. Uh, okay, next puzzle, new puzzle. All right, so, and we're going to not look at the far from here. Yeah, okay, so this is uh, 18.5. Okay, Seis Pnei Rasha Lotov, Lahatos Sadik Bamishpat. And I'll tell you, this is another ambiguous syntax uh, grammar one. So, how do you translate it? So se'is, uh, literal meaning is lifting from nasa, from nun sin aleph, uh, but is used so figuratively. Also? What was that? Is it, I'm like the also? Or... Uh, yeah, I think it's the same. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the same shorash. Yeah. Um, but it's also used figuratively to mean uh, showing favoritism. So like when we say, for example, yisa Hashem panav elacha vichuneka, may Hashem lift his face towards you. Um, or you have in... Um, uh, you have certain Isurim for judges that are, are, uh, are phrased this way, uh, like showing favoritism. So, yeah. And it, it's usually when it's, when it's talking about showing favoritism, it's, it's combined with Panim, like, uh, you know, say it's Panim, showing uh, favoritism is the way we translate it. All right, so how do you translate it? Mm. I mean, it seems weird, but the, the favorites of the, of the Rasha are not good. Um, okay. And the Saudi. Tilt. Uh, actually, I'm not sure what they're Lihatos. Yeah. Tilt is, is, is an accurate translation, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe tilts towards Mishpat. Okay, so the, again, we, we, as literally as possible, it's like this, okay? Seis Pnei Russia, the favor showing of a Russia, Lotov is not good. Lihatos Tzadik Mishpat, to tilt a Tzadik in judgment or justice. So a couple ambiguities here. Uh, What's the ambiguity with Seis Pnei Rasha? Is it? Are you looking more for good or for bad? Uh, okay, that's interesting. I mean, I think Seis Panim is always good. Right. Uh, like it's just, it's just confusing with the second half of the process. That's what I said. Yes. That. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Like it could be that you're like showing his Russian, it's like you're lifting that up. There. Right, so I, I am pretty yeah. sure it's not used that way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's only used for like, uh, you know, um, doing something in his favor against justice. Oh. Yeah. Also, I mean, it's weird, like the end, to say like doing something like 
but mishpat seems like it would be like that is mishpat to like uh right right so i guess the question so i guess there's three ambiguities i wasn't thinking about that one but the uh uh or there's yeah, yeah. lahatos does that mean so that, that one you can say is that good or bad right right yeah 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 right oh, okay yeah yeah right good so that, that's the other thing also oh so there are a lot of ambiguities here okay, so lotov is that going on just the first half or is that going on the second half okay another ambiguity here in other words you could read it like this is ace Pene russia lotov oh for a bit, uh, here, here's let's do a minimalist uh, commentary look at the targum okay Lemesav Ape Russia, top right. Lemesav Ape Russia, Lo Shapir. So to uh, show favoritism to the Russia uh, 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 is, is not good. Af Lo Lemitzle Dina La Tadika. And also to incline the din for a Tadik. Okay, he's already, I guess he's already interpreting it, right? He's saying for a Tadik, right? Because um, Lehatos Tadik Bamishpat. Doesn't that just means to incline a tzaddik in just judgment? Doesn't say whether you're helping him or hurting him. Okay. Looks like the the targum is uh, is is taking a stance on that. Um, no, that's, that's not the way I thought it would go. I thought it would be like the Russia is tilting the tzaddik in in regards to mishpat in some way. Okay, so here so there's two ambiguities in that. Okay, so one is es pnei Russia. All right, who is the Russia in this case? <laughs> ah, that's, that's two possibilities, right? So in one case, in one sense, you could say that the Russia, or one way of reading is the Russia is the judge, and that would fit in with Ace Pnei Russia, meaning the Russia's showing favoritism is not good. But even, it, that's weird because even if he's not a Russia, he shows favoritism. Right, so then according to that route, you'd have to say, what is the point in identifying him as a Russia? Meaning, meaning, is it limiting the case, saying that if a, if a regular person in, a perverse, uh, or shows favoritism, that's bad, but there's a unique badness by the Russia doing it? Or is it calling him a Russia because he's doing this? You know? um, but then the other way of saying it is, say, who else would the Russia be if not the judge? The other guy, yeah, the other, like the other litigant, right? The other bald in, right? So in other words, is the scenario here, so let, let, let's just assume a normal court scenario. You've got a judge, you've got a tzaddik and a, uh, and a rasha, okay? So one way of reading it is for the judge to show favoritism to the rasha is not good. And then the other way of saying it is, no, you have a, a judge and two litigants, I guess one of whom is a tzaddik, and it's saying it, the Russia's show, showing favoritism, sorry, the, the Russia judge's favoritism showing, favor showing is not good. You know, right. very, very confusing here. And then the other ambiguity is lihatos tariq mishpat. So you have the targum splitting it into two clauses and putting the lotov effectively on each one, right? So it's in Russia lotov and lihatos tariq mishpat lotov. The other way to say it is to read it all as one case. Right. That favoring a Russia is not good to incline the tzaddik in mishpat, meaning, I don't know if that's the motive, if that's the effect, if that's part of the definition of the case. So this is a perfect example. I mean, we, we kind of had this last time, but it was, last time we just had two ways of reading the pasuk. is either one mushal or two clauses. This is one where like every single thing is like a, there's a binary, like, do you read it this way or that way, this way or that way, this way, and, and you get lots of different results. Mm -hmm. Also, is mishpat going on the first half Like it seems like it is. Right? Seems like it, right. Meaning, it's a rush above mishpat. Right. Is that what you meant by yeah. going on the first half? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's something that is, I think, a um, the the we do have a certain liberality, liberal uh, permission, whatever, in uh, in taking um, parts of psukim and applying them to the other half mm -hmm. because it's we're talking we're dealing with a concise um, a concise proverb here. Mm -hmm. and, you know, for example. Uh, and th this, most of the Mepharshim, or a lot of the Mepharshim state this in the first Pasuk in, in the main part of Mishle, which is 10 1, uh, which says, Ben Chacham Yisamach Av Uben Ksil Tugas Imo. So a wise son makes his father rejoice, and a foolish son is his mother's sorrow. So the, the Mepharshim basically say there's two ways you can read that Pasuk. One is, a Ben Chacham makes Davka his father happy but not his mother necessarily. And, a, and a, a foolish son is his mother's sorrow, but not his father's. Mm -hmm. So you read each half and you just take each subject and predicate in each half. Or you can learn it that Ben Chacham is Yisamach Aviv V'imo, 
and Ben Xiel is two gas avi of emo, and you just take each half and apply it to the other. Or another example that they cite is or is Arua la tzadik uli yishrei lev simcha. So is that saying specifically, or or is Zarua for the tzadik, and that's one statement, and then uli yishrei lev simcha, or is it or the simcha Zarua la tzadik uli yishrei lev, and then each half just applies to the to the other half. You know, total intuition or or read it both ways. You know, and 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 many t- like the the there are two types of Mepharshim. There are the ones who will only give one interpretation, um, like the Metsudas David. And then there are ones like Rabbeinu Yona, a little bit, like we mentioned yesterday, or Meiri will list every interpretation uh, of a grammatical reading. Like he'll list one interpretation per grammatical reading. So he seems to be okay with saying like, oh yeah, this is intentional, or like, I'm in doubt and I'll just express ideas according to both of them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, and there, there's also a, uh, uh, a uh, two ways when you're confronted with ambiguous readings like this. So there's, uh, there's two ways to go, right? One way is you either take the side that intuitively makes sense to you and you follow your intuition, or what, what Ryan Moskowitz always used to do is you take the one that seems impossible because then you get more interesting ideas out of that, you know? Now that's only if you have to choose, like, uh, you know, like, like something, you know, sometimes you have the luxury to do both. So what do you want to do? <laughs> so, well, I mean, we have a lot of uh, possibilities. Let's, I think the main thing we're going to have to do here is do we treat this one, this puzzle as one case or is it saying two different mistakes of, in other words, is it fa- the favoritism of the wicked is not good to incline the tzaddik and mishpat, one case, or is it favoritism of the wicked is not good and inclining the tzaddik and mishpat is not good? The former is, is how I read it. Oh. Is how you read it. Yeah, because I think grammatically it flows better, right? Lehatos, you know, the infinitive, right? Mm-hmm. Makes it seem like Showing favoritism to the wicked to incline the the. Right. I read it the opposite What's that even mean? Yeah. yeah, that's the other question. We didn't even ask questions on the meanings yet, right? And also, we have to ask what is a tzaddik and what is a rasha, and not that's not just like a throwaway like stom fill out your form question because what makes that question more pertinent in uh, the context here? They're, right. din. They're din, right? So this is either this is talking about a righteous person and a wicked person. Or it's talking about, we use the term society in Russia, but then, you know, Russia not beating someone who's a Hitler, meaning someone who should be convicted. Right. And a tzaddik is not talking about emotion, it's talking about someone who could be, uh, um, uh, you know, who, who deserves to be vindicated. I was just looking at that over uh, Rosh Hashanah with uh, Ariel Tucker on the book, uh, the um, three svarim are open before God, the tzaddikim, gemurim, rosh Hashanah, gemurim, and benonim. And like the Ramban says that explicitly, that it's not talking about your total righteousness level. And you could have a guy who's a complete, or not, I guess not a complete tzaddik, but you have a guy who's a tzaddik, but he gets a din of, his, his psak din for that Rosh Hashanah is he's liable for death, you know, and so he's put in the book of Rashaim. Not because he is a Russia, but it's Russia of a din and tzaddik of a din. So that's not like the Ramam. That's not like the Ramam, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, so, so the, and, and that's just something I think you got to be aware of. Anytime you're talking about a mishpat context, that Rasha Bedin, Tzadik Bedin is, is a valid interpretation of these, uh, these phrases. And in fact, I mean, I, I don't know, what, which one makes more sense to you, that this is talking about like the like levels of perfection, or this is just Bedin? Is there one that jumps out to you? Yeah, the levels of that makes more sense, you're saying. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. I was going to say the opposite. Well, why, why, is yours, why does yours make more sense to you? Um, well, I guess because you are, well, actually, no. No, never mind, never mind. Yeah, I think the other way. Right? <laughs> yeah, because, because um, if you're, like, inclining toward the, like, person who doesn't deserve the good thing. Yeah then it doesn't really matter whether he's a rusher. Yeah, okay, good. That, that, so that, that was my first argument also, is that, like, perversion of justice per se is bad. Right. So like, it shouldn't matter. In fact, if you care about whether this person is righteous or wicked, that itself is like a different element of a perversion of justice, you know? Um, but on the other hand, you can make an argument, you can make an argument for the, that this is talking about a real righteous person and a real, uh, Oh, I mean, if it's the, uh, judge that we're talking about. Oh, that's also true. Right. Well, let's take the one with the litigants. Cause that's the most like, uh, Easy uh, parallel or a symmetrical uh, case. So then, why why would Mishlei focus? In other words, if it's a perversion of justice to mess up anyone's judgment, why would Mishlei focus on specifically showing favoritism to a Russia?
Well, I mean, you might, you might think that's like a good diversion of justice. Oh, no. No, right? That's if you're trying to incriminate a Russia, right? Yeah, yeah. Whiskey yeah. might be like the most uh, tricky and like that convincing. Thing. Yeah, I think so. Even without going to the particulars, I think you could make an argument to say that, yes, perverting judgment in general is bad. And maybe there are other persons that deal with that. In fact, the Torah deals with that, says, you know, that uh, you should uh, not pervert judgment. <laughs> But maybe there's a unique temptation or a unique like decision making scenario specifically when when a Russia is up for din and like you have to uh, you have to make a decision you know and that's what it's really uh, talking about here yeah okay so I think because there are literally just so many ways of reading it okay and then I don't think like it's going to be productive for us to like go through and decide which one uh, to to do let's just brainstorm. If you think of an idea, then say it. And if you can say how you're reading it first, and then we'll, we'll flesh out and, and resolve all the ambiguities as we explore your idea. Can I interrupt you with a uh, uh, Einstein story? Uh, so I might have, hold on a second. I'm, it's possible, Joe, that when we were learning over the summer once, then I, did I read this Einstein thing to you? I don't think so. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go someone else then. Um, so this is, this, is, uh, this is, I'm just mentioning this now because we're still kind of at the beginning of the Mishlash here, and it's like kind of methodology. Um, this is in the book, The Evolution of Physics by Einstein and Infeld which uh, has um, on why we did work. So um, he, uh, he says, uh, so this is a, a metaphor called the great mystery story. Okay, so he says, in imagination there exists a, the perfect mystery story. Such a story presents all the essential clues and compels us to form our own theory of the case. If we follow the plot carefully, we arrive at the complete solution for ourselves just before the, author dis the author's disclosure at the end of the book. The solution itself, contrary to those of inferior mysteries, does not disappoint us. Moreover, it appears at the very moment we expect it. Okay, now he, he goes to the Nimshaw. Can we liken the reader of such a book to the scientists who through su out su successive generations continue to seek solutions of the mysteries in the book of nature? The comparison is false and will have to be abandoned later, but it has a modicum of justification which may be extended and modified to make it more appropriate to the endeavor of science to solve the mystery of the universe. Now here's what we're interested in. Oh, no, not yet. Uh, the great mystery story is still unsolved. We cannot even be sure it has a final solution. The reading has already given us much. It has taught us the rudiments of the language of nature. It has enabled us to understand many of the clues and has been a source of joy and excitement in the oftentimes painful advance of science. But we realize that in spite of all the volumes read and understood, we are still far from a complete solution, if indeed such a thing exists at all. At every stage, we try to find an explanation consistent with the clues already discovered. Tentatively accepted theories have explained many of the facts, but no general solution compatible with all known clues has yet been evolved. Very often, a seemingly perfect theory has proved inadequate in light of further reading. New facts appear, contradicting the theory or unexplained by it. The more we read, the more fully do we appreciate the perfect construction of the book, even though a complete solution seems to, re to recede as we advance. Now, here's the paragraph I wanted to get to. In nearly every detective novel since the admirable stories of Conan Doyle, there comes a time where the investigator has collected all the facts he needs for at least some phase of his problem. These facts often seem quite strange, incoherent, and wholly unrelated. The great detective, however, realizes that no further investigation is needed at the moment and that only pure thinking will lead to a correlation of the facts collected. So he plays his violin or lounges, lounges in his armchair enjoying a pipe when suddenly, by Jove, he has it. Not only does he have an explanation for the clues at hand, but he knows that certain other events must have happened. Since he now knows exactly where to look for it, he may go out if he likes to collect further confirmation for his theory. And last paragraph here, the scientist reading the book of nature, if we may be allowed to repeat the trite phrase, must find a solution for himself, for he cannot, as impatient readers of other stories do, turn to the end of the book. In our case, the reader is also the investigator seeking to explain, at least in part, the relation of the events to their rich context. To obtain a, even a partial solution, the scientist must collect the unordered facts available and make them coherent and understandable by creative thought. So this is true of all thinking. But I think in Mishle, I just was thinking of that because we had that moment of silence there, that um, there is a certain sense that you'll get as you learn more Mishle. When you are, you, you get a sense of when am I done with the messing around of how to read the Pasuk and like collecting the facts? And when can I safely transition into the thinking phase? 
And when you transition to the thinking phase, it's very important to just let your mind go in whatever natural direction it goes. Um, because, uh, you know, and that, that, that will get better as you develop more of a Mishlaic intuition. Um, and, uh, and then once you, once your mind seizes on something, then you can go back and like, look at the facts through the light of that, that intuition. And then you'll see like certain paths that get clear or like at least suggest directions to think. So helpful metaphor to think of. And, I just, and also what I did just there is also, um, in a way, the equivalent of smoking a pipe or playing the violin, which is that like, if you find yourself just with a brainstorm, just too much stuff going on in your mind with all these ideas, if you like pleasantly distract your mind in a way that allows you to keep it working in the background, uh, you know, uh, like let's say like you don't go and like watch YouTube videos or something necessary. I mean, I, each person has their different thing, but like, you know, um, so sometimes like thinking of a different idea or like talking about something, you know, can like give your mind the space it needs to like let the intuition fly, you know? I yeah, good. See? <laughs> a release a reading with an inkling of an idea. Sure. Good fun. So, so I'm reading it like this. So, Seis ne Rasha Loto. So, I guess the favoritisms of, of like a Rasha are not good. Lahato is Sadi the Mishpat because they affect, like they tilt in some way the Sadi the Mishpat. Ah, oh, that's good. So, you're saying the Rasha is the judge? Rasha is the yeah. judge. And you're a Sadi coming before. A Sadi is coming before him. Yeah. And he's going to like affect, he's going to notice that person who is like opposite of him. Yeah. Right? He's going to affect their judgment. Okay, so you're saying, and so I, I, this is clear, I just want to articulate those, that you're saying that this is a, you're, that Rush and Sadiq are in your actual levels of perfection. Yeah. Right, not Bedin. And so saying that the, oh, and, and, and just to be clear here, so you're saying the Russia is really, um, the Russia is only trying, favoritism, is what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. But is the, if you ask the Russia, is he trying to incline the Mishpat of the side or it's happening unconsciously? I would say it could be either one. It could be either one. Yeah. Unconsciously even. even unconsciously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, the Russia, the favoritism of the Russia, whether conscious or unconscious, mm -hmm. is definitely going to be against the Tzaddik uh, because he is the opposite and the Russia feels a certain... Um, whether it's threatened or inferiority or whether it's like uh, he's actually opposing the Tzaddik success because yeah. the Tzaddik success means the downfall of the Russia. I, yeah. I think that's more, you're saying a little bit different than I was in. I think that's more in my mind because I was thinking it's bad and that it will just affect the judgment of the Russia, not necessarily for bad or for good. I could see either way. Like I could see the Russia seeing the Tzaddik and being like, well, that guy's such a Tzaddik, he's like a good guy. So I should give him a good judgment. And that's not something a Tzadik judge would do. It's not something... Oh, interesting. Uh-huh. So, okay. So, yeah, that is, that is different. Right. But it sounds like... Um, why did I think yours fit better with the Pasuk? Um, I mean, I can tell you what I think mine yeah, fits better with the Pasuk is that I, I think Lahatos Tzadik with Mishpat does not seem to be... Like that phrasing doesn't seem to be good. Right. Um, I mean, you, you could read it as good because it says the favoritism of the Russia. And if you're learning the, the judge as a Russia, then he's, he's trying to favor the Tzaddik. Mm -hmm. um, I'm reading it as, as not good or bad. Like it just says Lahasha, like to incline. Right. That's how I'm reading it. Right. But the, I thought you were trying to explain the case where the Tzaddik, the, the Russia is trying to do something He's trying to like judge favor. Judge I'm explaining the case that the Russia is judging biasedly mm -hmm. because he is. The problem is it doesn't. I don't know why it would specifically affect the Tzaddik. Mm -hmm. So that's, what, that's I think what makes more sense to say he's judging like like poorly uh -huh. necessarily. Um, but I'm saying like the Ace Pene Russia. This guy has like um, biases, which is bad. Loto um, because it affects really affects everybody, so that's why I don't know why. Uh -huh. Okay, I mean, I, 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 I like, uh, definitely sounds like you've got something there. Right. Uh, some, yeah, yeah, the, the, the trick is gonna be work, to work it all out then. Yeah, so you, I guess keep on uh, mm -hmm. thinking about that. You, you guys got anything? No, <laughs> it's a toughie, it's a toughie. Um, let's do, um, I'm gonna show you two ideas, just because in the interest of time here, and we, you can know, continue to think about it throughout the week, even though we don't have Michelin tomorrow. So the simplest one, I think, is the, the Matutus David. So we look at the bottom of the page. He says, where are we here? Okay, uh, bottom left. 
seis, okay, so hanose pneha rasha lezakhoso bamishpat. Someone who shows favoritism to the rasha in order to make him meritorious in judgment. Okay, hine kefula chataso, bottom right on the next page. His chait is double. Kinasa pneha rasha, because he showed favoritism to the rasha, vihita mishpat hatadik, and he inclined the mishpat of the tzadik. Asher shnehim lotovim, and uh, that both of them are not good. Umilas lotov, choser lamala ulmata. And the phrase lotov refers to the first and the second half of the Pasuk. That's why it's in the middle. So w- w- what's his idea here? The judge is in the third party. And the judge is the third party, yeah. The judge is the audience of the Pasuk. He's saying by favored, favoring the Rasha, he's like uh, pulling away from the side at the same time. Yeah. That is it. How's it like uh, Because, okay, so the way I'm interpreting it, which I don't think is a stretch, uh, mm-hmm. is that the case here is you got two people in front of you. So once you, if you, if you vindicate one guy, it's in the other guy's, it's not in the other guy's favor. Meaning you can't, you can't show favoritism to the Russia without being Mata the Din of without. Mata means like to turn away from him. Like lean the other way, lean, lean negatively. Yeah, I mean, it, it practically is going to mean to mean negatively, but it means to like uh, modify his uh, the judgment that he should get, yeah. you know. Um, and I don't think the Matus David is necessarily even saying that this is a tzaddik and Russian imperfection. I think this is just bedin. In fact, I think that makes, make, makes more sense. Um, now, just structurally, okay, what's the hava mina, or, or who needs to hear this? I mean, it's the judge, right? But what, what is his mistake that the puzzle is trying to? Um, you might think he's, oh, he's helping out that bad guy. Yeah. He's not having negative consequences. Exactly, right? So in other words, the mistake here, and I, I think this is one that like, uh, we'll, we'll, okay, we'll extend it to other scenarios outside of judge, justice in a second here. But this guy is consciously showing favoritism to the Russia, which he probably knows is not good. And the point of the puzzle is to show you that there is another unintended justice that you're depriving the tzaddik of what he deserves. Mm-hmm. You know, the tzaddik within it, what, of what he deserves. I think that is a certain... Um, uh, mistake that people make is they compartmentalize and they, they like, uh, they, they say, okay, fine. I shouldn't do this, but like this guy really deserves it. You know, he really deserves like a break, you know, but that's not necessarily fair to the other person who you're, you're affecting by making that decision, you know, like applying this to another scenario, you know, um, let's say you're in charge of, admitting people to a college or whatever, you know, and like you're making decisions and let's say like some uh, applicant comes to you and like they don't actually deserve the position, but like you feel compassionate or like, you know, you want to give them a chance, like maybe they're from a background of, uh, of you know, not enough opportunities, you want to like give them a break. So you, 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 you rationalize um, uh, making an exception in their case. So, and you pat yourself on the back because you're like, I, I've, it, 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 it's good to do this in this case, you know? Yeah, but what you're not thinking of is you're depriving another deserving person of that position. And how are you justifying that, you know? So it's, it's addressing this type of compartmentalization of, of not realizing that a consequence in a, I think there's probably like a logic term for this, like a closed something system where like, if you do one, then like it affects the other. Mm-hmm. You know, the computer programmers probably know this, I don't know. <laughs> a zero sum game. <laughs> see song effect. Yes, that's the technical term. What were you saying, Isaac? Zero sum game. That's the term. Zero sum game. Yes, that's the term. Uh-huh. Zero sum game. Right. Right. So realizing that it's a zero sum game, and therefore, even if you do have the best reason for for being Mizaki, the uh, this this guy, that doesn't warrant uh, that doesn't warrant because of the other the other term uh, the other harm you're producing. Um, so that's one idea. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. The other one, unfortunately, okay, I, I praise Taurus Chaim Mikros Gadolos to no end. Uh, I pointed out one flaw in it, which is they put the raw bog in the back for some reason. Yeah. Discrimination. Um, but also, and I, maybe I did mention this also, they don't have Sadigon's commentary. They only have his translation. So I, here's, I printed this out just to take a look at this one thing here. Is raw bog on Mishlei like long? Uh, no, he's, he's just as short as the other commentators. In fact, some of the ones that they put in there are, are, are longer. Okay, so if you look on the... Oops, sorry, hold on. Uh, oh, I got to open the right page again in my PDF. Um, oh, wow, I just did it. Right instinct. Okay, uh, right column at the bottom. Oh, so first of all, first of all, let's look at the translation, okay? Um, if you look on the Mikros Godolos, it's probably easier to see 
on the actual Kudolos at the top right, he says, uh, hold on, just got to scroll, annoying scroll. Seis, you see it there, top right? Seis pnei harasha in ba tova. Velo hatai satsadik mishpad. Okay, the, the showing favoritism for Russia, there is no good in it. And neither in the, in the tilting of the Tzadik's Mishpat, okay, of the Tzadik Mishpat. So we, we, there's one question we didn't ask uh, when we were analyzing it at first, which is, you know, Mishle's, one of Mishle's jobs is to say the consequences. Low Tov is just not a helpful statement. It's not specific enough, you know? So what Saidagon does is he takes that and he runs with it and he says, yeah, what is, why does it say low tov instead of like specifying the consequence is to show that there is no good that comes from it. Okay, now what does he mean? So now we have to turn to Saidagon's commentary. So on Saidagon's commentary, bottom right, second line from the bottom col- uh, 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 of the right column, you, you should see a hey. Mm-hmm. Everyone got it? Uh, it's on page, first of all, make sure you're on the right page, which is, what's the page number on there? To say uh, Kuf Chaf Tes. That's the yeah. first page. Okay. Yeah. Right column, mm-hmm. second from the end. Ain Tov Bazeh. So Ain Tov Bazeh Lashofit Mipne Shazet Evil. So there is no good in this for the judge because it is in unjust. Okay. We will analyze in a second. Velola Tzadik, and not for the Tzadik. Okay. Next page. Right column. And now the Tzadik, Shemaf Sido, because he's causing him a loss. Velola Russia. Lefisha Ozro al Risho, and not for the Russia because he's assisting him in his wickedness. Vlola Anche Ha'ir, Shazen Nase Benehem Biglal Silik Habrachos, and not for the people in the, in the city because of what will happen among them due to the withdrawal of Brachos. Mm-hmm. Okay. So before we get into the particulars, what's his general take on the Pasuk here? What's his general uh, point? Bad for everyone. It's bad for everyone, right? Um, and I think this also is, uh, and, and who do you think the audience of this puzzle is? The judge, right? This is clearly talking about the judge. So I think this is also addressing the same mistake that Matsuda's David is addressing is anytime a judge is going to show favoritism, he's going to rationalize it by saying, I'm doing some good, right? So Matsuda's David addressed it by saying, yeah, you're doing good to that guy, but not to that guy. And Saidigun saying, no, you're not doing any good, <laughs> okay? So you're not doing good for your, and he mentions four things. So the, for the judge, it's not good because it's injustice. For the Tzadik, because you're causing him a loss, which I think, by the way, that second, the Tzadik one, I think that's just what the Matus David is saying, right? That the Tzadik Bedin, you're causing him to lose out when he should have uh, won the judgment. The Russia, because you're helping him with his wickedness, okay? And the Anche Ir, because you're removing the Bracha. So we just need to define the first uh, and third and fourth. So what does he mean that it's not good for the judge because it's, an injustice. And it's bad for him to do injustice spiritually. So you could say you could just say he's making recourse to whatever value system you attach to justice. Then that's it. You know, um, like for example, like you know, let's say for example, uh, there's a midos damage where a judge has to be someone who's who's ethic like who's who, whose character traits are in line aligned towards doing what is fair and just and uh, you know and equal. And he's, he's, he's messing up that mita of justice in himself. You could put it in the framework of Maise Hashem, that God desires justice and you're bringing, and, and judges are the way of implementing that. So you're bringing about a, a, an injustice there. Um, you could say in terms of his concept of justice, that the whole nature of justice is that it's objective. Once you start messing with it for subjective reasons, you're just annihilating the whole concept of justice. You could say in terms of his functioning as a judge, that like, you know, if you, once you start, per, you know, making judgments not based on the law, you're not acting as a judge. Like you are not, you're, you're just, you're, you're no different than like the common, uh, you know, thief. well, you're maybe not, you're not a thief because you might, might not be doing it for money, but in other words, you're not functioning as a judge, you know? So just like if a doctor does something that harms the patient, that's just not in, in the, in the in functioning as a doctor, you know? So you can make arguments for the judge. And I think there's like, that's a whole like slew of like, why shouldn't a judge do injustice? Okay. For the Tzadik, we, we said we were causing him a loss. Okay. The Russia, cause you're helping him with his wickedness, right? So that's the thing is that whatever got this guy into this pickle in the first place, which would have caused him to be liable, you're basically, he's going to walk away thinking that either what I did was right or what I did was wrong and I got away with it. And that's going to make him more prone to doing evil later on. And then the Anche Ha'ir, because of the removal of Brachos, what's your take on that? I 
Jewish society when we come to one Brachos. Right. So one way to take it is it's talking about like the Brachos uh, in a Hashgacha Klala sense that you're corrupting the society, uh, especially if you're the judge, right? Like uh, one person does a crime, so then that affects the victim and it has a little effect on the society, but if, if it's all the way up there at the judge level, it's affecting the, the, the justice in the society and that's gonna harm the society. And the other way to understand brachos, which I think is probably more what Saigon means, is, is our Gacha protest, right? Is that, that if you have a, uh, you know, the, the judge is presumably the, the person who has the most sway over the justice in the city and like the conduct of his inhabitants. So if the leaders are not uh, implementing justice as they should, then that's going to lead to a, a seal of you know, a withdrawal of the Hashgacha. So I, I almost don't even think that the particulars matter, right? Because the, the point to on the whole point is you as the judge think that you're doing some sort of good or that some sort of, it, it, it's justifiable when you pervert judgment. It's not good anywhere, you know? And it's in, that's an interesting way to like deal with rationalizations because I think part of the, we saw this in the Matsudos, part of the tendency of a rationalization is it's tunnel vision. You're looking at this one factor and you're saying, I'm gonna make a, a, a decision based on that. And oftentimes the way to realize the harm of the rationalization is you look at the either directly outside of that tunnel vision or you look at the entire framework. And both Matsuda Stavi and the Sadiqon just, it just punctures that whole idea that no, okay, even if you can say that you're doing good for this guy, you're causing harms left and right and therefore you shouldn't do it. All righty, good place to stop for today. All right, see you, Thank you. Oh, by the way, Isaac, I found, the, I found the dice. It was in the most unlikely oh, place. Good. It was in my hat. Where? I took Your off hat. the hat and, and I guess I emptied my pockets into the hat. And so I just oh, found wow. it when I was on my way out this morning, yeah. <laughs> All right.